So, welcome to the, this talk um, on social media and pathways to impact in the social sciences. And really what I want to start with is, of course, the, the fact that we, we, we don't live in some sort of cosy academic version of, of Plato's Republic, necessarily producing information to provide well-informed ways in which to do life or, or work. However, I think, and it's certainly on a much more practical level, there certainly is a, an increasing demand from government and research bodies and also universities that what we do produce has outcomes which can and, and should be mapped to external change or, in other words, has impact. And especially for the social sciences, this is what a recent report by the, the LSE would term the discovery myth. Really, where eureka scientific moments can somehow be replicated across other disciplines. And of course, for the social sciences, not only are such eureka moments seldom, if ever, part of the work we do, uh, and of course, uh, a lot of what we do isn't as quite as sexy as a large hadron collider, but also, it is, of course, too simplistic to definitively identify the impact of, of what we do within the complexity of the real world out there. And even where research does identify specific problems and potential solutions, as the LSE report nicely, nicely puts it, these multi-layered problems defy the heavily siloed grid of academic disciplines and knowledge development. Or in other words, we do tend to work in isolation, even on relatively similar problems within universities and also across institutions as well. So really within this research and, and impact conundrum, for want of a better term, what we're saying is that it's how we as academics through our research can mediate this gap between the discovery myth and demonstrable impact as a more useful approach to dealing with this pressure. And certainly in terms of, of what I want to talk about in terms of looking to social media um, and at least in part trying to answer this question is firstly, how can we show the relevance of our work within the complex social environment in which we live and work? And secondly, how we can use our, our work through social media as an anchor or linking point to a variety of bodies or agencies or, or public spheres upon which our, or to which our work is relevant. Or really in simplistic terms, what I'm saying is how we can think through social media of alternative means to connect different audiences to our research in a simple and effective manner. Because certainly in terms of debates related to academic work and accessibility, much of our work tends to be, but of course not always exclusively, fairly inward looking in terms of new methods or theories or insights and papers which is then, I suppose, ring-fenced by academic publications or publishers and academic circles, uh, generally immune from the public glare. And of course there are also many of us who engage, engage in funded reports or research as well, and by virtue of the, the usually or sometimes critical nature of academic social sciences, many of these works can either be treated with scepticism or indeed the findings are restricted or embargoed. But without certainly treading down that path as a debate in itself and getting back to what I want to talk about, social media generally provides each and every one of us with an uncomplicated means of extending the potential of external impact of our work. Not, of course, in the, the discovery myth sense as I've already talked about, but in the sense of changing what we could term our knowledge transfer architecture. Making us all more visible and allowing a wider range of potential users and benefactors to consider the, 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 the relevance of what we are doing to them, and also to increase the potential integration and application of social science work into a variety of other, of other arenas, and also to provide a space in which renewed thinking and influences can be brought to bear on our work, at all stages providing a more interactive medium for whoever it happens to be, public, business, government, policy makers, providing a means for them to see our work, and the potential impact. And I think importantly, again, none of what I'm talking about is at any stage about excluding or circumventing the rigours of peer review or ethics committees by rushing research and ideas out through some sort of virtual backdoor. But it's merely about considering infrastructures that can accelerate and promote knowledge exchange and exploitation as impact interfaces between us and the wider world. And I think it's important to consider this not just in and of itself, but also importantly, we need to place the production and consumption of all our, our research and work within a changing knowledge-based environment. And certainly on a, on a simplistic level, there is, is of course a very rapid shift to Web 2.0. 
through blogs, Twitter, file sharing, as interactive rather than static forms of information sharing. But I think more fundamentally, in all areas of public and private sector, government, wherever it happens to be, standard platforms for knowledge sharing as we become used to, such as conferences, such as seminars, because of both cost and time and travel, are becoming more and more of a luxury rather than a standard practice. And I know certainly uh, many people, because of, of, of increased workloads, find it difficult to travel as well. And also finally, and I think uh, more fundamentally, because of the, the, the ever-increasing difficulties for funding streams, there is a greater pressure among researchers to collaborate, either locally um, or internationally. And very simply, social media web 2.0 tools make this much more simple in terms of working with a range of partners and getting to the right audiences that research needs to reach. Really about, in the words of the LSE, widening the spectrum of accessibility of our work. And at this stage, no doubt, there will be a, you know, a mixture of, of interest and, and scepticism from everyone in terms of imagining how social media tools um, can be useful to, 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 to everyone. And certainly there are very real practical concerns in terms of information overload, with social media as another thing to do on top of the day job. What are the practical benefits that might, uh, demonstrably, uh, might, might demonstrably be, be there uh, in terms of, of using social media? Not to mention the, the quality of the potential information out there. And also, crucially, uh, IT provision and training. Um, is something which I think has to be has to be grasped. I mean, everybody needs to be working uh, working together in social media. So certainly that that is a is a bridge yet to cross within the university. But beyond some of these concerns, uh, many of which can be overcome with with some training um, and knowledge, there are a number of real benefits for adopting whatever sort of social media in terms of helping to increase the visibility and potential impact of work. And firstly, the, the vast majority of social media tools are extremely easy to use and intuitive. So if you can send email, you can easily use Twitter or a blog. And related to this, social media, for the, the purposes of, 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 of any sort of research, is also extremely easy to tailor and filter to, I suppose, avoid the, the dreaded information overload. Secondly, again, as research is now starting to demonstrate, both the, the, research, the profile of the researcher and their work um, increases with the use of social media, therefore, of course, increasing the potential relevance and impact to an ever-increasing audience, as opposed beyond very narrow confines of journal publications. And thirdly, uh, and very simply, most social media usually has very, you know, very little, if, if any, uh, uptake costs beyond some time in setting them up. And, and fourthly as well, beyond uh, increasing the visibility of work, it also allows you to create your own professional um, or information-based networks, again, tailored to your own research interests, providing a, a much more up-to-date and dynamic research, uh, or research avenues compared to Google searches or databases, for example. And finally, social media also provides a new platform for you to have discussions and debates and knowledge transfer about your work with other academics without being limited solely to peer review uh, publications or comfort conferences, um, really as part of, 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 a, of a much wider process to shaping formal research outputs in the long run. And again, some of you may think this is uh, some pie-in-the-sky salesmanship, but, I mean, there are a number of real benefits, certainly that, that I've experienced over the last number of months using Twitter. Um, finding tender uh, grant opportunities online, which, which you never previously would have come across. Um, ability to engage with a range of public and statutory bodies, um, increasing the, the, the uptake um, and participation in your research, and also being able to disseminate uh, before, during and after, disseminate uh, information relating to conferences and events that you happen to run. So there are very real and practical benefits that, that can, can be derived from social media. And hopefully um, people will also appreciate it's not just, social media is not just some sort of technological fad that will, will gradually um, disappear. And I think it should be embraced. But we have to remember 
without uh, getting into the detail of, of, of the technicalities of, of social media and setting it up, it is very much a simple means of bridging the traditional academic and institutional divides between what it means to do research and what that actually means out in the wider world in terms of who is and importantly who should be aware of her work and also generating an evidence base about external impact in terms of who watches, who follows, who uses and also who disseminates the research we actually put out there. So having, uh, I suppose, taken a, a very broad brush uh, approach associated with the use of social media, what I want to really to finally turn to are some of the tools to enable this. And when we look at the range of social media tools out there, it is quite staggering. From Twitter, blogging, professional networks such as LinkedIn, social networking, wikis, a whole range of tools are out there. But for the purposes of, of, of the talk today, I'm only going to concentrate upon two types of social media. Blogs and Twitter. It really is, is the most simple, accessible and, and, and arguably effective ways of, of, of getting your research message out there. And firstly, we have the blog. And essentially blogs are, are websites uh, which are usually maintained by individuals or small groups um, as a means of presenting a mix uh, of opinion, news, updates or comments in whatever your area of particular research interest is. And blogs are particularly useful for a number of reasons. Because firstly, they provide an anchored point on the web for particular information, either for, for you to follow or for you to produce. And uh, from producing uh, expert comment on the latest developments in, in your particular research area, through to providing funders, the public, government agencies with regular updates about research projects, they are an extremely useful form for both building your own profile or, or that of your research group or project. And secondly, most blogs also have some sort of comment feature, allowing uh, comment ideas and opinions from other academics or researchers in your field, allowing, again, ideas and thoughts or, or, or data to be shared and, and different light cast upon those. Again, providing really a, an informal collaboration space for, for, for peer review. And thirdly, blogs also provide a great searchable means of tracking work or progress by individuals or groups. And again, which can, can be advertised uh, very easily and quickly. So that would I mean a very brief, brief overview of, of blogs. Um, but what I want to move on to then uh, is Twitter. And I certainly know many people in the room uh, have Twitter accounts. Uh, but many of you, I suppose, may be, be equally sceptical about Twitter in terms of the, the uh, range of, of, of uh, celebrity banality that is, that is pumped out on a, on a regular basis. And also, um, what on earth, you may ask, can, can anything of academic value ever be said in 140 characters? But the important thing to remember that in spite of the, of the, the well-publicised banalities uh, out there through Twitter, it is an excellent tool to build and interact with your own academic networks. And rather than imagining Twitter as some kind of virtual gateway for information overload, you can tailor your account to follow and link again with precisely the new sources, information sources, research networks, organisations and projects that are relevant to your work. And again, one of the key advantages for Twitter is that there is no obligation to produce any information whatsoever. You can simply follow dozens or even thousands, if you like, thousands of, of information sources tailored again to what you're interested in as part of your research. But a bit like blogs, Twitter can also be used to produce in information if, you, if you're used to it in terms of your, of your research area. And again, what use 140 characters? Well, it's not what how you say things, it's what you're saying. Because I think within tweets, you can embed a whole range of information about your work. For example, pictures, videos, links to websites, links to research reports and publication, whatever material you wish. And it's at this point where Twitter becomes very useful. Because not only can people comment on whatever you've produced or tweeted about, but they can also recirculate or retweet that information within their own interest networks. And this can range from a few people knowing about your work right the way through to several thousands or even tens of thousands uh, of people knowing about your research, depending on the size of, of, of the group of people you have following your, your, your interest. And also, I think, for research projects and events, as I've already said, Twitter is an excellent means of providing a lead-in or build-up to the event, and again, providing live updates uh, of the event. 
But again, only a very brief summation of Twitter. And hopefully so far you haven't been uh, too bored with the, this uh, very small, uh, brief account of social media. And hopefully some of the, the myths have been dispelled and, and a few more people may be interested. And certainly the, the purpose of, of the talk today is not to say you must absolutely use social media as part of your work. But undoubtedly, evidence of, any, of, of the work out there at the minute which certainly we can post out to you through the Institute, is that social media is benef beneficial to the impact of work in the social sciences, whichever way you look at it. And certainly social media is a new and developing means of enhancing traditional mechanisms of production and consumption of academic research. But I think the key thing to remember in all of the social media debate, which of course you can choose to use or not, is that in terms of the impact of your work, whether it's a eureka moment or not, is that relationships are the important thing for impact. And social media, whether through blogs or Twitter, are only there to help cultivate those relations. So as part of the, the research strategy we, we, we have and the impact strategy through social media, we do have three key areas uh, to, to work from. Firstly, uh, what we'd like to see from the, the unit coordinators, once a week or once a month, um, some particular news worthy item uh, of research in your particular cluster, whether that's an event you're holding, guest speaker, publication, or news comment. That's something at a bare minimum. But at another level, what we would also like to see, if you don't necessarily want to engage with, with Twitter or blogs, send us on links or ideas as to who we can follow as an institution, then without having to get into the, 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 the business of setting up your own Twitter accounts, for example, you can easily browse on to the Institute's website uh, and, and look at our, our live Twitter feed, and, and hopefully that will help you to gain information. And again, if you send us suggestions for who to follow, we, we, can, we can set that in place. An intermediary level, I suppose, in terms of our strategy, some of you may be interested in, in after the, the talk today, to think about social media. And certainly in, in the short term, we will provide a range of, of, of training and opportunities to help people get on board the use of whatever means of social media suits their work. So certainly that's something you can get back to you on. And also finally, uh, I suppose the, 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 the upper level of participation in social media, for many people out there who already have, uh, have Twitter or, or blog accounts, what we'd like to see is much more synergy between everybody. So what we intend to do are gather a range of details, uh, links, blog details, uh, Twitter accounts from those within the Institute who already use social media and bring those together because I think out of all of, of what I've talked about today the key thing to remember is that the collective impact of work of the Institute is much greater than the sum of its individual parts in isolation. Just something to think about in terms of demonstrating impact, what we do and getting our social science research message out there. Thank you.